Hi, it's Steph. Welcome back to my garden. We have been here in the Northeast having a drought and severe high temperatures, much higher than what we are used to in the past summers. So I'm gonna show you in my garden what is faring well with these high temperatures and drought situation that we're experiencing. The plants that we're going to look at are ones that I had researched and found on the internet as being listed as drought tolerant. So when we go around in the garden and take a look at these, these are plants that I've had planted in ground, most of them for a couple of years, so they're pretty established plants. And so we're going to take a look and we're going to see how they're faring. Are they looking crispy? Are they looking okay? Um, and those are going to be some things that are going to determine whether or not they're really holding up to these heat and dry temperatures first plant in my garden that does really well in high heat and in drought situations is these succulents here. This is called hens and chicks. They are really beautiful um, type of sedum or succulent and they are great as a ground cover and I have them here in this terracotta bowl as a container arrangement and honestly I barely have to water this. So low maintenance that next year I think I might have more succulent arrangements around the garden versus you know different annuals. And so I have some Angelina stone crop in the back here some Cyboldi sedum. And this started all because I was handling these sedums. They broke off of the plant I was working with. I shoved them in this bowl and they rooted so easily. So sedum is also super easy to propagate. So if you have any in your garden, you can just take tip cuttings or pieces that break off, shove them in some soil, and before you know it, you have some new plants. But sedum or succulents are super good in drought situations and they love heat. Here's some more of that Angelina stone crop sedum that I just have growing in the corner of my patio and I kind of love the way that it looks just growing in crevices and along the mulch. Another beautiful sedum I have in my garden is Autumn Joy Sedum. This plant here has beautiful foliage and the blooms will start turning a beautiful rosy pink as we get closer to autumn. Really drought tolerant and loves the heat. Here on my patio containers, I have another sedum. This one is called Cyboldi. This is the second summer that I've used this as a container plant, and it does need to be divided. As you can see in the center, it's a little bare, but I will continue to use this as a container plant because it is so low maintenance and drought tolerant. Rutabecchia, also called black-eyed Susans, even though technically they have a brown eye. Once established, they're also really drought tolerant and pretty carefree. They're a great plant and have an awesome color that takes you from midsummer through your early fall garden. I have my Rutabecchia or Black Eyed Susan kind of intertwined here with my Baptisia or False Indigo and I really love the contrast of that blue foliage from the False Indigo intertwined with this Rutabecchia. Another plant in my garden that has a reputation for being pretty drought tolerant is coneflowers and these are doing well. They've been in bloom for a while now since at least the beginning of July and a couple of them have some you know burnt tips on them but these are also older blooms. We're a month in so at this point some of these could use some deadheading like even back here. But if you kind of look at them as a whole considering we've been having so many 95 plus degree days they actually still look pretty good and the plant right in front of them this is only the second year in my garden but it's a stokes aster and also is supposed to be drought tolerant once established Here's an example of something that's doing terrible, and it is my wee white hydrangeas. In fact, I've had to deadhead all of them because they literally looked like roasted cauliflower. The white blooms had gone all brown like this, and so they had to be deadheaded pretty aggressively. And now I'm hoping that they will flush back out, but they even have some leaf spot because I've been trying to once a week come in here and give them a deep watering and you know some of the water gets on the leaves but all of those had to get deadheaded because they were doing terribly. I have this scabiosa that's been growing in my garden for about two years. It keeps putting out so many blooms even during this long stretch of dry weather that we're getting it's not missing a beat 
It's being prolific with all of its purple blooms and it just keeps going and going. So this is another great flower for drought situations. The variety that I have here is called Butterfly Blue. Yarrow is another one in my garden that looks to be doing really well during all of this hot, dry weather. The variety I have here is called Tutti Frutti Apricot Delight. These are super long blooming, they love the heat, and they only need water very occasionally, making them great for drought situations. I have a drift of, or a grouping of three alliums here, and these don't seem phased by the heat or drought at all. Um, they are what it looks to be very drought tolerant. They prefer to be grown on the dry side, and they don't have any serious disease or pests that bother them. They are part of the onion family, so because they let out that scent, deer and rodents won't touch them. So these are a great drought tolerant perennial for your garden. This variety is called Millennium. Here I have a grouping of Munstead English Lavender. Lavender loves to be grown on the drier side, so it's absolutely loving all of this hot, dry weather that we're getting. It already had its first flush of blooms, so I went ahead and cut off all of the spent bloom heads, and now the plant is putting out a new flush of this pretty blue-gray foliage. Two more perennials in my garden that look like they're doing really well in this dry weather are my Nepeta. This variety here is Cat's Pajamas. It's on its second flush. I did already shear it back once and it has all new growth despite you know us having really dry hot weather as well as my Salvia. My Salvia over here is this darker purple and it's called um, May Night Salvia. Another plant that looks to be doing pretty well in this dry, hot weather we're getting here is this Globe Thistle. This is a hardy perennial and I grew this one from seed. The variety I have here is called Blue Glow Globe Thistle and they like dry soils and they actually like poor soil. And because they like poor soil, they can handle the dry drought conditions that we're getting. They do need full sun though so that they can prevent flopping, but other than that, they are a very hardy, drought tolerant, heat loving perennial. Here's an example of a perennial in my garden that does need water. Lots of water actually. This is a swamp mallow, also known as a hardy perennial hibiscus. This variety here is called Luna White and it's absolutely beautiful. But I've found that on days where it is really hot, if it doesn't get sufficient water, it starts to kind of flop in the center. So this one here would not be considered drought tolerant, at least in my experience. Here's an example of that flopping I was talking about. You can see that some of these branches are kind of falling over, but if I give it a good deep drink of water, it will start to perk back up but these are absolutely stunning blooms and well worth the effort. Here's an example of a shrub that is not doing well this year in my garden and it is a hydrangea, a panicle type hydrangea and this one here is called bobo. Bobo is typically a beautiful hydrangea but this year it is not liking any of this hot dry weather and lack of water. It looks really crispy and just generally unhealthy. I've been coming out here about once a week and giving it a pretty deep watering with the hose, but I don't think that that has been enough because they are roasting up. These are rated for part sun to full sun, and full sun is classified as six plus hours of sun a day, and that's certainly what they get here. And I've had them planted for about three years, and this is the first year that they've burnt up this way. So hydrangeas, hydra, they need lots and lots of water. Here's another shrub that actually likes to be on the drier side and it's looking fine in my garden. This one here is a butterfly bush. The variety I have is Puckster Blue. I also have Puckster Amethyst. These are dwarf butterfly bushes by Proven Winners. The pollinators absolutely love them. And I know for a fact that they like to be on the drier side because I actually had some issues with two of them coming back. In the back here, I have the um, Puckster Amethyst. So here in the front, I have a Puckster Blue, and this one is looking fine. However, 
my Pugster Amethyst that is there and one that I have here, I actually had to cut way back because it was not happy. This bed gets a lot of moisture and it had um, died way back. So I cut it down to the ground and luckily it's starting to flush back out. But butterfly bushes are shrubs that like to be on the drier side and handle the heat and lack of rain pretty well. In contrast to the wee white hydrangea and the bobo, my little limes are handling this hot, dry weather just fine. They do like water, so I have been watering them deeply about once a week, just like the other hydrangeas. However, in terms of the heat, these do not have any crispiness going on and are looking really lovely. These are also in a full sun location and there is no burning on the foliage or the blooms at all, which is wonderful. In general, container plants will require more watering because they are not insulated by the earth and typically not mulched, and so they do dry out a lot faster. But this combination I have here in my window boxes of annuals with some mandevilla, which is a tropical, as well as this atomic purple gomfrina that I grew from seed. I'd gotten the seeds from Baker Creek. These handle the drought just fine. I have been watering these maybe every other day and they are looking okay. In contrast, I have found that if I do go that every other day, that the alyssum that I have at the bottom will start to look really wilted and unhappy and start getting some yellowing or dry leaves. So it's always something to consider when you create your um, containers, whether or not all of the plants that you combine together have the same water and light requirements. Another thing that I found really helpful when doing your containers is having larger containers. They do take more soil to fill up, but because they have more soil volume in them, they also retain more moisture. And so the larger the container, the more soil and moisture it holds, the less frequently you will have to water. Something else that I did this year is I added some wood mulch to my larger containers. So that is another step that you can take, mulching your containers that will also help keep some moisture in them. So mulch is a great insulator. If you don't have enough mulch, that's another way that in a drought situation, you can sort of preserve the water that you are giving your plants is to ensuring that they have a proper layer of mulch to keep that moisture locked in. Zinnias are an annual that handle the hot, dry weather just fine. In fact, they absolutely love the heat. Here's another annual that I have growing in some containers. This is a nasturtium. This variety is called Tip Top Alaskan Salmon by Baker Creek, and it's a really pretty creamsicle, like apricot salmon. And while this plant can certainly handle being watered every other day and still look okay, it does not like the very hot sun or the heat. So it definitely prefers a shadier location. So I've actually moved it from my front step to a little bit shadier spot on the porch here. And it's looking lovely. So nasturtium is a little bit more drought tolerant. However, it does not like really hot sun. Here in my front walkway, I have a border of the atomic purple gomfrina, which is the same gomfrina that I'm growing in my window boxes. Now into the window boxes, I do have to water those maybe every other day and sometimes daily if it's been really hot but also windy because the wind dries things out terribly. However, this drift that I have along my walkway, because it is planted in the earth and insulated by mulch, the roots are covered by the mulch which helps retain moisture. I only have to water these about once a week after the seedlings start growing and get going. These are super easy to grow from seed. You just soak the seeds overnight and then you plant them in the landscape and they love the heat and they love these conditions. The hotter, the better they grow. 
really pretty and easy plant. Here I have some Asian Garden Celosia, and this would have been another really great annual to grow in the landscape. They are drought tolerant, and so with the insulation of the mulch, it would retain enough moisture to not have to water them frequently. This was a really easy plant to grow from seed. I have them growing in my containers this year. And in the container, because it is a smaller container that does not retain as much moisture, I have had to water them about once a day, which is the case with most annual containers. Um, with the exception of a few plants that are more drought tolerant, or if you have a larger container that will retain more moisture, then you might have to water less frequently. But in the landscape, this would be a really good option for an annual that is drought tolerant, like the Gomfrina and Zinnia. Thank you for joining me in the garden today. I hope that you found some ideas and some plants that would be drought tolerant if you're experiencing these high temperatures and dry weather in your part of the country as well. Um, it's important when we're planning our gardens to kind of take these things into consideration. Um, as I'm into my 40s, I'm noticing that there are certain things that are becoming a little bit more tiresome um, the, as the size of my garden grows, uh, specifically things like buying more long season interest shrubs that maybe bloom instead of more perennials that will require deadheading and extra maintenance. Um, maybe thinking about things like living mulches and planting ground covers so that in the future I'll have to apply less mulch. And now with our climate changing and even if you don't watch the news, it's pretty evident just by being out in nature and out in our own gardens that the summers are getting hotter, they're getting drier, and so it's important to plan for that as well with some plants that have a high drought tolerance. So all things to consider and hopefully you got some ideas from this video. As always, thank you for joining me and I will catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the thumbs up button and please subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos and we'll see you soon.